In this video, we install Windows Server 2022 and Hyper-V on a physical computer. Hello everyone, I'm Travis and welcome to my channel. This video is a little bit off brand for me. My lab is primarily in Azure, but I still need to spin up a VM on premises every once in a while. And my current server is an HP DL380 G7. It's pushing 13 years old and missing some features I need for other projects I have planned. Coming up, we're going to install Server 2022 and Hyper-V on a new physical computer, or at least new to me. Before we get started, I'd greatly appreciate it if you'd like and subscribe to this channel. Share with a friend and click the bell icon to get notifications of new videos. I ask this at the start of each video because it helps grow this channel and lets others find out about it. It doesn't cost you a thing and it helps me out a lot. Also, check out the links below to my Udemy courses on Azure Virtual Desktop, Windows 365, and hybrid identities between Windows ID and Azure ID, or Enter ID. And thank you channel members, your support is greatly appreciated. Back to it, I picked up a refurbished HP Z4 workstation recently. I don't need a rack mount server and the workstation allows me to add some off the shelf SSD disks for extra storage. The hardware used in this video is not important, but it has a newer Intel processor with plenty of RAM for running a few VMs. We'll use a USB drive to install the OS. Most computers don't have CD-ROMs anymore. The one I'm using does, but I don't have a way of creating a Windows install CD. I haven't used a CD burner in years. For those of you who are a little bit younger than I am, a CD-ROM is a shiny physical disk we use to share data on. They're sometimes confused for a drink coaster. Anyway, coming up, we'll create a bootable USB drive with the Windows server bits, install the OS on a physical server, and then add the Hyper-V role to the computer. The computer used for this example has two SSD disks that will configure as one logical RAID 0 or Stripe disk. If you want to follow along, you'll need a computer. The computer must be configured to enable virtualization technology. Most modern processors support virtualization, but it's often disabled by default in the BIOS. Consult your manufacturer documentation for details on how to enable virtualization technology. You'll also need a USB drive that's over six gigs in size. The USB drive will be formatted and any data on it will be lost, so be warned. You'll also need the Windows Server 2019 or 2022 installer ISO. A link to the Windows evaluation site is below. Make sure your system meets the hardware requirements for the OS you're installing. To get started, we'll use a free utility called Rufus to prepare the USB drive. Link to that is also below. Let's jump into the demo and get started. Let's get started with formatting the USB drive and adding the install media. And for that, we'll go to the Rufus website. I suggest downloading this directly from the Rufus website. Link is below or on the screen. We'll scroll down. There are the executables. You can select whichever one you want to download. And once it's downloaded, run the executable. Rufus runs as a standalone executable. You don't need to install it. If prompted, click yes at the user access control. From here, we'll simply select the device. Make sure it's the correct USB drive. The device will be formatted and all data on that device will be lost. Next, we'll select the server install ISO file. The rest can be left as default and we'll click start. It gives us some customization options. For this example, we'll leave the option to remove the requirements check. That ignores the minimum RAM, secure boot, and TPM requirements. It may be best to have these requirements in place, but if you don't, you can leave this checked and it will ignore those requirements. We'll click OK. We get a message that all data will be destroyed. That's fine. Click OK. And that starts the process. During this stage, it reformats the drive, copies the ISO files over, and gets it ready as a bootable device. I'll pause here until it's finished. It finished. Now if we go to that drive in File Explorer, here's the drive. It has the name of the ISO. We have all the files here to install Windows Server 2022. Let's set up the computer next. Next, we need to plug in the USB drive and boot the computer. We need to select the USB drive for the boot process. If there's no OS on the local disk, it may select the USB drive by default. Otherwise, you'll need to press a key or a key combination to get to the boot menu. Check your hardware or motherboard manufacturer to get the keys to access the boot menu. For this HP device, it's F9 at boot. I'll select the USB disk. 
and that starts the install process. So here we select our language, the time and currency format, and the keyboard or input method. That all looks good. And install now. Here we can add our activation key. Because I'm doing this as a test and I may reinstall it a couple times, I'm going to select the option, I don't have a product key. Once I have the computer running the way I want it, then I'll add the product key and activate the OS. Here we have the options. We can select standard, core, or standard with desktop experience. The option without desktop experience is the core install. For this example, we'll do Windows Server 2022 Data Center. with the desktop experience. I'll accept. I already had Windows Server 2019 installed on this. I could upgrade at this point, but I don't want to do that. I want a fresh install, so I'm going to select the custom option. Here I have several drives. I can tell by the size that drive 0 and drive 1 are my data disks, and I'll deal with those later. I want to go down to the smallest drive, drive 2, and I'm going to remove all the partitions. These were left over from the previous install, so I can just delete. We'll delete all the partitions on drive two. And of course, this will remove data, so if you have data you want on there, don't do this. Now the smallest drive, the drive I'll use for the OS, has no partitions and just free space. So I'll select that. That's where I'm going to install the operating system, and I'll go next. From here, the installer will recreate any of the partitions it needs, like the recovery partition and the boot partition, and then it's going to copy the files. This step will take some time, so I'm going to pause here and come back once it's done. The files were copied, and it initiated a restart. Once it's restarted, we'll finish the configuration. By the way, if it reboots into the Windows installer like we just went through, you may need to remove the USB drive and then restart. The reboot finished, now we have to add a password for the administrator account. Make sure you add the same password for both prompts. And now we can log in. And there we are. We now have Windows Server 2022 installed and running on the physical device. Click yes or no if you want the PC to be discoverable on the network. And we can close the admin center. Now that we have it installed, there's a couple of steps that I want to take before we go any further. First, I'm going to change the computer name. We can do that by going into local server. Click on computer name. We'll change it. You can also add it to a domain at this point if you want to. I'll call this Hyper-V 2022-01. And for now, I'll leave it in a work group and click OK. The change won't take effect until we restart the computer. That's fine. I'm going to close. And I don't want to restart it now. The next thing to do is update the computer. I like to make sure the computer is up to date before I go any further. So I'll search for updates. We'll check for updates. There are a few updates out there. I'm going to pause here and let it finish installing. After it installs, it'll reboot. And once it reboots, the name change will take effect. The update finished. Let's get the data drives ready next. This computer has two SSD drives. I'm going to use data striping to configure them as one large disk with no redundancy, since this is just for a lab. In production, I would suggest using RAID 10 or another RAID level that can withstand a drive failure. If your drive's already formatted, you may need to remove the partition. Let's go to Disk Management. If we search for disk, it's the option to create and format a hard drive. I have two drives. One is formatted, the other one is not. 
And then the third one, disk two, is the OS disk. I want to use both disk zero and disk one for my striped volume. So I'll delete the volume off from disk zero. That frees it up. Now we can right click on disk zero and select new striped volume. This option stripes data across two disks. It's better for performance, but there's no redundancy and won't withstand a single drive failure. If we want redundancy, select mirrored volume. That copies data to two or more disks. A striped volume has performance and we can use all the drive space. The mirrored volume has redundancy, but we lose 50% of the drive space. I'll select new striped volume. We can go to next. Disk zero is selected. I'll select disk one as well. If the disk you want to use doesn't show up here, make sure that you've removed any volumes or partitions. Here you can see that the total size is twice the capacity of one of the disks. It's also important to make sure your disks are the same size and probably the same performance characteristics. I suggest using the same make, model, and size of disks for any type of striped volume. We can assign a drive letter or a mount point. I'll leave it as drive letter D. We'll go next to format volume. We can leave everything as is, except I do want to change the volume label. We'll call it data. Next. Once we're ready, we'll click finish to format. And it tells us it's going to change the disks to dynamic disks. That's okay. And yes to continue. And just as another reminder, all these actions we're taking are destroying data on existing disks. So just make sure you don't have any data you need on these disks as we're deleting and recreating partitions and volumes. We'll give this a second to finish. And while we're waiting for that to format, there's one other thing I like to make sure I do on new installs. Change the time zone. There we go. That took some time, but the format finished. Now it shows two dynamic volumes. Let's go into File Explorer. We'll go to this PC. The data drive has 3.63 terabytes of space. And we can add a folder. I'll create a folder for the ISOs. That folder will be used later to store the ISO files. Now that we have Windows Server 2022 installed and the disks are formatted, we're about ready to install Hyper-V. But before that, there's one other configuration I want to make a change to. Let's enable Remote Desktop. If we search for Remote and go to Remote Desktop Settings, we'll enable Remote Desktop. And confirm. This allows us to remotely connect our RDP into the server. If we go into User Accounts, it shows the administrator, the only account on this box, already has access. Since we don't have DNS set up, let's open up the command prompt. We'll type in ipconfig. And that shows the IP address we can use to remote into this computer. Now that we have that out of the way, let's set up Hyper-V. Now we're ready to add Hyper-V to this computer. To install Hyper-V, we're going to start at Server Manager and go to Manage, Add Roles and Features. We can click Next using the defaults until we get to Server Roles. And at Server Roles, we'll select Hyper-V. We get a message that we may need some features for Hyper-V. These are management features used to manage well Hyper-V. We could add them to a different computer and manage it remotely. For this example, we'll add them to the local computer. Click Add Features. If you get a message at this point that says you need to enable virtualization, you have to reboot, log into the BIOS, and enable virtualization technology. Each computer and motherboard manufacturer has a different way of doing that. The computer or motherboard manufacturer should have instructions on how to enable virtualization. From here, we'll go next. We can leave features as they are. Go next to Hyper-V. From here, we have some options to configure Hyper-V. Click next to virtual switches. 
Every virtual machine needs a network connection to communicate with other virtual machines. We can create a virtual network here if we want, but for this example, I'm going to leave it and create it later. Go next to migration. We can enable live migration between servers. This example only has one server, so let's skip this for now. Let's go to default store. We need to make some changes here. We need to supply the default location for the data disks. This is the location of virtual disks that we create later on when we create virtual machines. This example will use the data drive we configured earlier. Let's browse. We'll go to the D drive. That's the data disk we configured previously. And with D selected, we'll make new. And we'll call this Hyper-V. With Hyper-V selected, let's create a new folder. And we'll call this one Data Disks. And OK. We want to keep these data disks off the C drive because they can use up a lot of IOPS. Next, we could leave the default location for the VM configuration files, but it's more convenient to keep them close to the data disks. Click Browse. We'll go to the D drive. Select Hyper-V. We'll make a new folder. For this example, I'll use VM configs. And of course, you can name these whatever you'd like. Click OK. That changes the default location for the data disks and the configuration file when we create new VMs. Click Next. And if everything looks good, click Install. You may need to reboot once it's finished. This is going to take a few minutes, so I'm going to pause here and come back once it's done. The install finished and it rebooted, and now if we look at the left-hand side, we have Hyper-V. That gives us some information about the Hyper-V install. And if we go to the Start menu, Administrative Tools, we have Hyper-V Manager. And there's the name of the server we installed Hyper-V on. That is how to do a bare metal install of Windows Server 2022 and add the Hyper-V role to that server. That is how you install Windows Server 2022 on a physical computer and add Hyper-V. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and thanks for watching.